Welcome to Politics Nation. I'm Al Sharpton. Tonight's lead, Paul Ryan's big mistake revealed. We've learned a lot about Mr. Ryan this week, but the latest news on his stimulus flip-flop could be the worst yet. And he's hearing about it on the campaign trail. Here's what happened in Virginia just moments ago. Epitomize what the American idea is all about. Why did you lie about accepting there it is, folks. Ryan being asked why he lied about accepting stimulus money. This is more than hypocrisy. It's about whether Paul Ryan has trouble telling the truth. Remember earlier this week, we told you about this Boston Globe report. It showed that in 2009, at the same time he was bashing President Obama's stimulus program, he was writing letters to the Energy Department asking for stimulus money for his own district. Look at this one from December 2009. It begins, Dear Secretary Chu, I'm writing to express my support for the Wisconsin Energy Conservation Corporation's grant application. It ends, thank you for your consideration of my request. And look, there's Ryan's own personal signature. Looks like he really wanted that money. And he got it. He got it. Nearly 21 million stimulus dollars went to Ryan State. Mr. Ryan must have had a change of heart. Because here is what he was saying before writing those letters. We can do better than this. This bill, this economic stimulus package, is unworthy of our new president's signature. Unworthy. But like I said, that was before he wrote the letters. Surely after these letters went out, Mr. Ryan, Mr. Ryan must have had a different take on the stimulus, right? We learned that much of this stimulus, which was neither targeted timely nor temporary, in fact, it was just a down payment on government programs. All this temporary booster shot stimulus didn't work in the stimulus package. So we don't want to go with ideas that have proven to fail. We want to go with ideas that have proven to succeed. The failed stimulus is unfortunately typical of Washington's destructive economic agenda. It has failed to create the jobs promised. The stimulus failed to create the jobs promised. That doesn't sound like the same Paul Ryan who told the Energy Department that stimulus money in his state would, quote, stimulate the local economy by creating new jobs and, quote, create or retain approximately 7,600 new jobs. Wow. This is a problem for Ryan. He slammed the stimulus, said it didn't create jobs, then begged for stimulus money, arguing it would create jobs. But all week, Ryan's been pressed on this, and he just denied it all. It came out again today in the AP. It was a, a repeat of that Wall Street Journal article from a couple of years ago where uh, you had asked for stimulus money for your district. Is that accurate? No, Is that report I accurate? I asked for stimulus. I don't, I, I don't recall that. I haven't seen this report, so I really can't comment on it. Um, I oppose the stimulus because it doesn't work. It didn't work. Never asked for stimulus money. But what about that name right there on the letters? Today, the truth caught up to him in a statement that he released. Ryan explained the stimulus requests were, quote, treated as constituent service requests in the same way matters involving Social Security or Veterans Affairs are handled. This is why I didn't recall the letters earlier, but they should have been handled differently and I take responsibility for that, end of quote. Folks, it should have never come to this. It should not have taken Paul Ryan, a politician on the biggest stage this long, to just tell the truth. We're 81 days away from the choice, and Mr. Ryan will have to answer this one all the way to November. Epitomize what the American idea is all about. Why did you lie about it? Joining me now is Chris Hayes, host of Up With Chris Hayes here on MSNBC. He's also the author of the new book, Twilight of the Elites, and Crystal Ball, co-host of The Cycle right here on MSNBC. Thank you both for being here. Thanks for having Thank us. Here. Chris, uh, do you buy Mr. Ryan's response to all of this today? <laughs> 
Oh, God. I don't know. Look, I mean, look, there are there are two different channels. There, you know, people have district offices, and they have their office in Washington, D.C., and things come through district offices, which is what he's saying, right? It came through the district office, constituent services. But what, what what's really revealing to me is this is a pretty big request. I mean... $21 million. Right, so $21 million. I mean, the, the, the Not point is that if you're... constituent services. Well, and also, if you're the penny pincher that you're saying... And you think that there's just all this money flying around, which is the, the, is the sort of soul of the critique of the stimulus, then you should put into practice your, you should put into practice in your own office a process of very intense forensic scrutiny of these requests if that is the thing that you think is the problem with the stimulus to begin with. You shouldn't just be passing letters out the door with your signature saying $21 million here, $21 million there, what the heck. But isn't isn't that the point, Crystal, if you were adamantly opposed to the stimulus, you're a member of Congress, right? you think it's wrong, you think it's a waste, you think it's whatever his reasoning was, wouldn't your staff know right. that you so that when a so. letter was brought in to ask them to ask for it, you'd say that is against the policy of our congressman? Yes, you would certainly think so. And it seems to me like Congressman Ryan, like so many Republicans did during the stimulus, was trying to have it both ways. I remember so many Republicans who would rail publicly about the stimulus to play to the, you know, the national audience and wear the mantle of the fiscal conservative would then be perfectly happy to yep. show up at the ribbon-cutting ceremonies back home when their own district was benefiting from the stimulus money. So just like those other Congress people across the country, yeah. I think Paul Ryan was trying to have it both ways here. And, and, and I think the key word there is well, we shouldn't lose sight of the bedrock policy here. When you say benefit, the, 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 the Recovery Act gave out money for real things that were beneficial investments. And they the project, that. Yeah, and the yeah. project here was a, Exactly. The project here was a conservation project, was a good project. But you know, the, 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 the hilarious thing about all of this is that the actual substance of it gets lost his office should have asked for that money, right? right. That was the only right thing that and, he did. Right. And from what we uh, uh, led to believe, the people benefited from it. Yeah. But he can't say that right. and attack the president. Uh, let me play for you, Crystal, where he actually denied uh, taking stimulus money before. I assume you voted against the stimulus, and I'm just curious if you accepted any monies in your district. No, I'm not one who votes for something and then writes to the government to ask them to send us money. I did not request any stimulus money. Now, this is in 2010. <laughs> in 2010, he said himself, no, I'm not the kind of right to get stimulus money. Yeah. He said this. Stimulus funds and gave this explanation. It says, quote, if Congressman Ryan is asked to help a Wisconsin entity applying for existing federal grant funds, he does not believe flawed policies should get in the way of doing his job and providing a legitimate constituent service to his employers. So his team all but admitted it back in 2010 while he was denying it. Right. His team was admitting it. And trying to justify it. Right. Well, and the one thing that you can say about Paul Ryan is he must have a fantastic PR machine because he has managed to endear himself to the libertarian billionaires, the Koch brothers, that whole network, and convince them that he is truly on their side and he believes in no government, which his budget certainly reflects. But on the other hand, he has increased the deficit more than anyone. He voted for the Medicare Part D. Right. He voted for TARP. He voted for the, the auto bailout, which we were talking Iraq, about. Iraq, Afghanistan. And he's not a fiscal conservative, if you believe fis fiscal conservative, means paying for your government. He believes in a small government, and he believes in very low taxes for the rich, and he's had this great PR machine to, to create this public persona no, as well, a serious every, politician. Every time that he has faced a moment where he would have to take a vote that would really be a politically difficult vote, to vote on his principle right. against what the politics of his district are or the national mood are, he has totally g gone with the politics and not right. on principle. The auto bailout. I mean, the auto yeah. bailout, for the love of God. This is the thing the Tea Party, even more than TARP, rails against ad nauseum, and he voted for it because, guess what? There are jobs in his district that he wants to protect. Right. And you know what? More power to him. That's what most Congress people do. But most Congress people don't go parading around themselves as this kind of saintly figure who puts principle above all else. Well, he's become the symbol of the Tea Party and those that believe in the exact opposite. So it's almost like uh, do what I say, don't do what I do for my own home constituents yeah. because I've got to get reelected. 
but I'm going to represent this nationally so others will have to deal with the rhetoric of what I'm saying. And, right. And the other thing I would say is that anyone who thinks that a Mitt, Rom a Mitt Romney in the White House and a Republican Congress would lead to smaller deficits, I have a bridge to nowhere to sell you. There is just <laughs> You've been absolutely... watching my commercials, yes. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but my bridge actually went to Brooklyn. <laughs> but but, but uh, uh, let me say this, uh, uh, Crystal, I think it is important, though, that we understand that this has been a pattern. In his statement today, he's still uh, having to, uh, admitting the money, still had to take a shot at the stimulus. Because th this is what he says, quote, regardless, it's clear that the Obama, Obama stimulus did nothing to stimulate the economy, and now the president is asking to do it all over. But we have letters showing that he argued where the stimulus would right. create jobs in his own state, and it did. Right, and that's the obvious follow-up question. Well, did that money benefit your district? And if it didn't, then why were you asking for it? I mean, there's a fundamental disconnect between the philosophy that he claims to believe in and claims to espouse and his actual actions in terms of his voting record. It seems like there's a disconnect bet between the sort of Ayn Randian philosophical world that he likes to spend his time in and what things yeah. actually look like when they're implemented on the ground. Let me show you one. I've got to go, Chris. But uh, he attacked the president on General Motors plant uh, in Janesville, Wisconsin, that closed in 2008. Watch this. I live in Janesville, Wisconsin. We used to have a big General Motors plant. A lot of my high school buddies worked at that GM plant. That GM plant was shut down in 2009. I remember President Obama visiting it uh, when he was first running, saying he'll keep that plant open. One more broken promise. Hmm. Only problem with that, it closed in 2008 before <laughs> President Obama was well, president. Well, also the congressman. And he was the congressman. <laughs> Let's take a step back. And George Bush was the president. Let's take a step back and marvel at how ridiculous it is that Paul Ryan is the man selected to go around the country accusing the president of cutting too much from Medicare and not doing enough to bail out the auto industry. Well, at least... <laughs> Uh, we That's will know argument. if they yeah. ever get in the White House, the West Wing will be flip-flopping all over <laughs> Pennsylvania Avenue. It's not going to happen. Chris Hayes, Crystal Ball, <laughs> thanks for joining me tonight, and enjoy your weekend. Thank you. And catch up with Chris Hayes Saturdays and Sundays from 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern, and Crystal on The Cycle weekdays at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on MSNBC. Coming up, the Obama team sends an offer... Letter to Mr. Romney on his tax releases. You won't believe how he's responding. And Mr. Ryan is heading to the world's largest retirement community in Florida to defend his Medicare plan. How is this going to go? All that plus my interview with Jamie Foxx, Ron Howard, and Eva Longoria. They've got a creative initiative that's great, a new project that works. It's exciting. And you won't want to miss this interview. You're watching Politics Nation on MSNBC.